All right, everyone, it's time for some, uh, some fun here talking about society's nightmares, which is like, if you look back throughout time, McCarthyism, Satanic Panic, MTV, Stern, uh, the whole nine yards, it, through every moral panic, uh, it's really, really funny to think that this period in history is going to be remembered very similarly to those things. It's going to be notable. It's got a, a, a no footnote in history. And the people that are like participating right now, people who are being called extreme or they're evil, you know, orange man, bad style, uh, actually are, are part of a cultural juggernaut, or I should say countercultural juggernaut. It's very, very interesting to think about it, because like 10 years ago, you know, when I first took up a webcam, I'm not thinking about anything like that. I'm just sort of entertaining myself. I'm making YouTube videos and random shit, talk about some infeogens or, you know, thoughts about the Bible or whatever. Never expected it to become quite as powerful as it is. I knew that it would grow. I knew that the internet and, and social media and video making would become more prominent, would become more important, more, more mainstream, which is both good and bad. Um, but never expected, you know, that it would become literally part of a subversive countercultural movement in which now you've got mainstream, <laughs> mainstream news forces saying that YouTube has a problem, it has a problem with extremism, it has a problem with bigots, it has a problem with like, you know, the, the whole culture, like, like they even are attacking YouTube as a culture, which it's become, or I would say a counterculture. The idea of like content creation on the web, especially on sites that have any brand loyalty at all, like, like BitChute, it's got its own little subculture. Gab has it and Dissenter have their own little subculture. Mines has a sort of subculture. YouTube, all these other sites. They have their own sort of clicks, you could say. Now they overlap. It's like I'm a YouTuber, I'm also the biggest user on BitChute. Uh, somebody can be really big on Gab, they've also got a, a powerful, like a Facebook brand or something that they do. they got their own website or whatever. Uh, that's definitely true, but they fall into these different groups. And they're part of the collective nightmare of authoritarians, of soccer moms, moralists, you know, the sort of people that want to drag you down and make you like a work-a-day, a fucking boring drone and shit like that. Uh, are pissed off at YouTubers right now. And it's really, really fun to be part of that. I mean, I enjoy every single day, I, I chuckle about that fact, basically, that, <laughs> in a way, we're all sharing a similarity with all of those great figures from the past that shocked and, and caused, you know, really negative emotions in the worst segments of society. Again, the, the moms and dads against everything sort of movements, the moralists, the hand ringers, the ones that they look around the corner at you to make sure you don't throw your gum on the sidewalk and stupid shit like that. They've been around forever. They were the ones that like, they're like, oh my God, prohibition, which caused a bunch of drunks. The satanic panic, oh my God, we gotta have Jesus, Jesus. And then they destroyed their own religion in the process. People who are self-destructively paranoid about literally everything, they're boring. They don't know how to have a good time. They, they sit there and they wring their hands and they watch TV and find things to be offended about. And then they have a phone right next to them to call their senator five times a day telling them what to do. That's basically these busybodies. That, they have good organizational skills. They get together and they tut-tut over everything and they're just losers. It's so great to be on the other side of history, especially during a paradigm shift. Uh, that makes it even more powerful. I fucking love it. All the gritty shit that goes on the internet, like, like minus the really truly abusive stuff, but all the weird shit like videos deliberately made to shock people and, and diatribes about <laughs> the, you know, hate and, and intolerance and stuff even are very, very funny because they serve an important point, which is that you, can't, you cannot censor ideas and say, uh, this is unacceptable, this is taboo, it shouldn't exist at all. It never works, number one, you always lose. The moralists always get overthrown, and then the next generation usually becomes moralistic. What I see with content creation, though, is this. I'm seeing one thing, and I'm very happy about this. The slow transfer of, of, what, of like Gen X to the Millennials, especially, but also now Millennials to Gen Z, has not caused that countercultural essence to go away. The internet itself is being matured artificially maybe by corporations and political forces, but the people comprising it aren't. They're getting even edgier, actually, over time. I think that's a great thing. Oh my god, YouTube caused the Christchurch shooting. No, it didn't. No, you're, you're crazy if you think that it even contributed. That's a bunch of bullshit. It feeds the media narrative. It helps when the shooter's crazy enough to put that in his, his uh, dumbass manifesto. Ah, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's true. Yeah. So, uh, it's good to be countercultural. You think about all the exciting, the fun stuff throughout. Is it the stuff that was like mainstream at the time and it was sort of accepted? No, it's usually boring shit. 
you know, some of it can be kind of comfy. You'd think of like, oh, you know, Burl Live singing the Christmas greats or something. Okay, I like listening to Burl Live. It brings a little twinkle to your eye or something. Uh, but at the same time, around the same time, Elvis is shaking his hips, and that's getting cut off on TV because, you know, he's it's too wild. He, he makes the girls' uh, juices flow too much, and so we can't put that on TV. Oh, my God, it's a collective break. The ragtime, ooh, swing dancing, oh, really gets me going. And all of these things, it's, it's like so hilarious, like flappers and shit. Even like a hundred years ago, like your great-grandma might have been shocking her parents because she showed her knees. She wore a bathing suit that was illegally short and actually got arrested once. Oh my god, it was a great scandal in the family. She drank and smoked cigarettes. Ooh, she drove a car. Isn't that really funny to think of, your flapper relative that you might have had? Or back in like the 60s, maybe one of them was like a subversive, like a fucking hippie or something like that. Or actually, technically speaking, because among the youth, actually, the war was more popular, <laughs> maybe going to fight, uh, and were opposed by older people. By the way, little known fact about Vietnam, actually, anti-war uh, sentiment was higher among the older generations. Specifically because they had been around before World War II and remembered a time in which the U.S. didn't do interventionism. So they were more reluctant. The younger generation had uh, gobbled up the propaganda. For better or for worse, you could say. Uh, communism definitely is a threat to our way of life and should be uh, fought against as much as possible. My words are better than bullets for fighting communism. We've seen that throughout time, too. It implodes on its own eventually anyway, leaving behind you know, scattered remnants of people who go to Starbucks and type a slam poetry on their iPad, so, you know, not a big problem. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it's so great to be part of that counterculture. It really, really is. Uh, you should contribute everything that you can towards it. Just by being a YouTuber, that makes you part of the cool crowd now because, uh, you know, supposedly it makes you edgy and extreme and you're part of a community that's becoming more and more toxic. Oh my God, they're doing things their parents don't like. They're doing things society frowns upon. Oh my God, somebody's talking about legalizing drugs. This person's like, you know, in laundry. It's like, who fucking cares? This is all the good things in life. You look back at history and all the things that were condemned during every moral panic are the things that were the best. The shock jocks on radio and, and jackass and mad TV and stuff like that. The edgy comics. You don't remember the very family friendly like Y7 rated comic that you just saw with your kids. No, you remember that time 10 years ago when you went to the raunchy bar and you saw that comic uh, uh, who, who talked about the aristocrats. That's what you remember because it's funnier. There's a reason for that. You don't remember the video game that's very, you know, the, the boring video game. You remember the one with over-the-top violence or that's really creative or something like that and allows you to sort of be like a living god within the context of the game. You remember the edgy stuff. You remember the exciting stuff. Boring stuff is like, fucking get rid of it. Boring stuff shouldn't, we should outlaw being boring. That would be a good law. That's about all. Peace out.